Yes, good morning. So, how many of you have heard about Mercurial? Oh, great, one, two, okay. So, yeah, it's a version control system, just like Git, but it's more powerful and fast than Git. So, let's dive into Mercurial. So, this session will be like more of a demo, so that you guys can, most of you guys have used version control systems, like mostly all of you have used Git over here. So let's dive into Mercurial and see how it's better than Git and other version control systems and how we can use the use it. So let's start it. Oh, sorry. Mm. Yeah. So let's start with creating a repository and try. So let's create a repo. Repo. See, repo. Okay. Mm. So now to initialize a Mercurial repo, just like uh, git init, you do edg init. And this is now a Mercurial repo. Let's uh, commit a change. Touch a. Okay, so now you have a file in your repository named A and you have written hello over here if you do it. So it's hello here. But to start to tell Mercurial to start tracking your file, you need to add it. Just like uh, not similar to get in git you do git add, but in Mercurial there is no staging area. Like in git you make changes, uh, add them to the staging area and then commit them. In Mercurial, there is no staging area. You just need to start tracking the file at, in the beginning. So in Mercurial, you will just do edg add a. Oh, mm. okay. So a already tracked. So by doing add, you are just starting to track that file. Okay. So now we have tracked the file. You can see the diff, and we have hello. Let's commit that. Okay, so let's have more commits over here. Echo world to A and uh, A to B. Okay, so the diff doesn't show B now because it's not all. Tracked. We need to add it to get it tracked. So let's add B, and you can see it's in the diff over there. So now, if what hap, uh, if you want to just like uh, commit the changes of B, not of not of A. So you can do edge come. Uh, you can change do that interactively. Uh, examine changes to A. Yeah, record. You don't want to record changes to A still. Okay, no. Changes to B, yeah. You want to record it, yeah. Oh, so it's edit B. Okay. So still the change to A lies in your diff. So it's like you can do all the things which you can do with the help of staging area. So uh, let's have. So now about like how to view the history like yesterday Christian was talking about bisects and rebase and all so let's do all that also so this is the log commands helps you to uh, see the history log so the log you can see that we have two chain sets one is uh, edit A one is edit B let's have more chain sets so I will just change the uh, current Ch commit the current changes which are there so it will be to A and then ok so coming from the git world all of you are used to branches like uh, git branch master git, pr git branch original and everything like so in mercurial to if you want to make a branch it's quite easy to understand how Mercurial works, just understand how a graph works. 
here you can see oh, is the rest of the part. Uh, yeah, like Sorry, yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, this is the window. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So now you can see it. So yeah. So now you can see that uh, the graphs looks like you have three chain sets. Uh, one on the other, one on the another. So now to create a branch, uh, so you can just update yourself. So it was the it is the current graph which we are working. Now if you want to create a branch, now how can we create a branch? Either we can create a branch from two like branches are like things like if you there is a root node and there are branches coming from here and here. So if you want to create a branch starting from one, you can just update to one and create a new commit. So let's update to one. Edgy up is a command or update is a command where you can update to existing commits like your working directories on commit number two. So if you will do, if you will print a, it's uh, if you will print a, it's hello world. But if you update to commit number one, it's commit number one, and when you will print a, it's hello because we have updated to an old, older commit. Did you just notice something different from the git? I didn't copy the hash of the commit. There is a revision number. Revision numbers exist in Mercurial. Yeah. And people use them. People love them, love revision numbers. You will see through the whole demo that uh, why revision numbers are so helpful. Like I don't need to copy the whole hash. So like uh, I'm on now revision number one. Let's let me change something. So let me add a. So I add here. Oh. So def yeah. Added world in new line. Okay. Okay. So created a new head. So the uh, commit is telling me that it has created a new head and when you will look through the log, you will see there is a branch over there and now these are two branches. So like these are two heads, you can look into the heads, you can look into all the heads by using edgy heads. So you can see there are two heads. Now if you want to merge it or rebase it, so let's start with rebase. Git people are afraid of rebase and I will show you how easy rebasing is in Mercurial. So you want to rebase 2 on the top of 3 or 3 on the top of 2. Like let's say I want to rebase 2 on the top of 3. So I will do edg rebase, re rebase. My source is 2. I want to rebase 2 on the top of 3. My re source is 2. My destination is 3 slash d3. Okay, and enter. Okay. Okay, so it created no changes. Like there were no changes different from 2 to 3 and replacing it like uh, the, the 2 and 3 changes were similar. Let's create a different change. So, uh, Okay, so so let's commit it. Okay, now our log looks like this. Now we want to rebase three on four. Similarly, edg rebase source 3 destination 4 and 
After this, the three will be placed on the four. So you can see when I press enter and this. So now the change as added world in new line is on the top of added world to B. So it's rebased. You can rebase whole the bran or branches on one on the another or like merge things. So it's easy in comparison to Git. People don't uh, rebase in Git very like usually. They are afraid of rebasing. Rebase rebasing. So you can rebase easily in uh, Mercurial. You just have to pass the source and destination. You can pass the root node of the whole branch and uh, the place where you want to rebase it and the whole branch will be rebased on the top of the destination commit. So this is about rebase and merge and everything. So OK. So ena enabling extensions. The rebase command which I used is not in the core Mercurial. If you will download Mercurial and do edg rebase, it will say rebase command not found. So basically, what we at Mercurial thinks that we should not provide users with options by which they can like hit on their own leg. Like rebase is a very useful command, but it also like uh, does something which might not be user friendly at some places. Like users can mess up with rebase using rebase command. Like they can rebase one thing on the another and like do things which are crazy and like and that end up in a place which is hard to recover. So that's why we have these commands in the extensions. And we can easily uh, enable extensions. We have a lot of extensions shift, shipped with the core. Like, uh, let me show you. So, So these are the list of ex extensions, like if I will. So we have a lot of extensions shipped with core. These are all the extensions shipped with core, like edit, large files, patch bomb. Patch bomb is extension which uh, emails your patches. The large files, like yesterday, uh, uh, one Git guy was talking about large files. We have these large files from long ago, eBay, shelf, strip. And we have a lot of extensions which are shaped with code. So how to enable these extensions? Simply you can do, yeah, this was where we were working. So to enable an extension, you just need to edit a small line in your SGRC. Your SGRC is a file where you have just like bash RC, you place the settings of your bash in SGRC, you place the settings of your uh, uh, mercurial. So you can have per repo SGRC and even a global SGRC. I will show you my global SGRC. So it's like you, I have set my UI name extensions. So in extend, uh, again. So yeah. So <coughs> I, I have set my username. Faces, faces is a uh, different thing. We will talk about it later. Alias is like uh, I have aliased few things like whenever I uh, uh, output log, it should be sh it should show me a graph instead of simple commands and in extensions how you ex uh, uh, enable patch bomb. So enabling extension is easy. You just need to place the extension name and the uh, path to the extension. In case the extension is shipped with core, you just need not need to put any path. It will automatically detect the path. And in case the extension is out of the core, just like I have two extensions enabled here, you need to just place the path and you can easily use the extension. So it's using the extension is very much easy in Mercurial. So let's talk about the powerful features which are there in Mercurial. It's they are history editing features. Like if you are working or uh, working for an organization and you send a series of patches and you uh, and the reviewer told you like I want I like it's a, a series of six patches and like I w I have some review in second patch and you need to change it I have a review in third patch and you need to change it what you do in the current world if you are not using Mercurial what you do like maybe rebase amend and everything like it's or maybe may, uh, most like some people just make new commits and push them. 
they don't know how to edit history or they don't have uh, like few, uh, weapons to edit the history so we mercurial we at mercurial have a lot of options to edit the history so first we will talk about the evolve extension so let's get to it. so first we'll talk about evolve extension so evolve extension is a very powerful trouble free history edi editing extension so i have enabled the evolve extension you can also enable you just download the source code add it into your sgrc and just use it so i will show you how to you uh, how evolve extension is powerful so for example uh, let me update to the parent yeah so for example i have uh, four commits so i want to just uh, let me see just like uh, if you want to see what commits are there you can just do g export 1 0 1 3 4 no 2 5 okay 3 5 okay 4 5 so the first commit was hello the second was hey the f f world and world so for example you need to uh, uh, just change the first commit you need to change the first commit which was which was like edit a and you added uh, a hello into the a so if you want to just uh, change it to hey what you will do uh, so in uh, using evolve you will just update to that uh, let's make a new tab so using update you can evolve to uh, you can update to that commit okay so we are updated to that commit if you will see a it's hello we want to change it to hey so let's open it so change it to hey okay the diff is there you want to amend it into the first commit like you want this change to be in this commit so just do amend and like it's the the commit is there so uh, yeah so the seventh commit is now uh, yeah okay the seventh commit is now i have added a in the uh, i have added a in the for a, a file but it makes few changes unstable mm -hmm. what is this so it made this changes like uh, this was our old, older commit which is denoted using x we edited it and the new commit is there we just want to rebase it for example if you want to just edit the edit this one also let's edit uh, add, edit the fourth uh, this first commit all fourth commit also this one and uh, in we wrote hey there let's change it to hello so if we want to just we want to update to fourth commit yeah so let's update to fourth commit we see b is hey world and edit world to be okay so we want to change this one first one or maybe we can change into this okay let's change into this we so i open b i just removed the this line and change it to hello and okay and i did amen okay so now when you will see the log you will have like okay so it looks scary now you don't know what's happening over here and you uh, don't have an idea of it so there is a command sg evolve all which will fix all these things like rebase the things which which should be there remove this uh, cross commits and everything and it will give you the working directory or the history which you wanted so it nothing to evolve on the okay so i need to update also Mm. I need to update on okay ok 
Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, so here is a merge conflict and I need to change it to okay. So it's saying like in on the base uh, on the base uh, commit you add hey and the next commit you add hello world. So you need to change the first commit to hello. Okay. So let's look at the log now. Okay. So now you have the same log which was there, but you have you will have the changes edited in the history. Let's see. The numbers are 7, 10, 12, 13. 7, 10, 12, 13. And you can see that I we changed the hello from hey. The history changed. And this is hey. And in the next line, we changed this from hello, this hey to hello world. Earlier what we did was this commit was like only world. Like we added only world over here. We edited the commit and this became hello world. And this commit is like, which commit is this? Wait. Edit world in a new line. Okay. Yeah, so this is A. That is sorry. So the history is edited. I guess I just okay. So like. Uh, maybe I just merge something wrong, so that's why that world is popping up there. So this is the wall extension. You can like uh, uh, edit commits behind uh, beneath the stack and do powerful history editing things and uh, related things which you like which you can't do in other version control systems. And you have very easy commands left. So let's talk about the next one. Next one is sg absorb. Like it's a very powerful command. Uh, I'm like you haven't heard about such type of uh, history editing tool till now. So let's talk about this. Okay, let's make a new repo because so okay. So let's create commits. Okay, I want to add a mm, touch B. Okay, so I have three three commits in which I uh, in the first commit I added a and I uh, wrote a to it. So okay, so all three commits are similar, just they are adding different files and with hello in it. Okay. So suppose this was a project that you need to make five commits and five files and write hello in it. Okay, done. Now for a, uh, now suppose what uh, the person who gave you this assignment and come to you and say that okay, instead of hello, I want hello world, and these are like thousands of commits, and you are like, what? I now I am going to add world in all these commits? No, 
obviously no so there is a feature absorb which you can easily use and do these things like let's see how it works first of all so for example i want to just add world in all these files and it should be it should be there like when i did it it should be like here like i did I I did hello world, not just hello, and it should be there present in every commit. Okay, so this one is very easy. So let's output everything, and okay, let's add add, add world to each one of them. I've added world to A, to B, and to C, and this is diff. Okay. so i need this diff to get absorbed in those commits and this world to be present there okay so first of all i need to enable the absorb extension which i have commented out so this enable the okay so now what i need is like this things should be absorbed in in this like it should not be only hello this should be hello world so what i do is sorry what i do is g absorb and three of three chunks applied and when i will x sorry the revision numbers must have changed so the revision numbers are now 3 4 5 and when i do 3 4 5 it's like wow You added hello world. You added hello world, and you added hello world. So it's like you. This is a uh, one example of where you are doing history editing. Evo uh, absorb works like it takes changes from your working directory, which were there in your edge diff, and absorb those changes where they should be. Like it knows where this certain change should go, and where the that certain change should go. So it works like this. You can. like it can go into the same file with different chunks like if you have a, if you have same file and you, you have two commits which are dealing with different chunks and you need to get absorbed in the same file in to do two different commits absorb works like that also in case you have ambiguous things to apply evolve uh, absorb leaves them in your working directory so this was about absorb it's a extensions still not shipped with core because it needs some of like grinding and refining to be shipped with core but it's like a awesome extension which i haven't seen with any another version control system so let's talk further so this was about absorb it absorbs your okay 5 minutes 2 <coughs> yeah i just want to let you know we're running we're running okay 2 minutes so this one was about absorb which absorbs your uh, working directory changes into commits it's a very nice history editing tool next one like more powerful tools to help you we have revsets so revsets are a functional language for selecting changes or revisions in mercurial so just let me show you so so in mercurial you can do like uh, i want the revisions which are authored by this person which are like uh, ancestors of this like i want like okay so i want the uh, sg export i want the parent uh, i want to see the parent of 4 uh, so what is the parent of 4 so i'll do parent of 4 and it's and the parent of 4 is 3 and yeah it's 3 over here so the like you can query revisions uh, according to a functional language which you have uh, over here uh, like uh, where so you do in databases like select star from this 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 so we have a functional language which it's very powerful when you work in the daily life with revisions and search for change sets uh, which are present there so you have a lot of uh, sorry so so you have a lot of uh, features over there like you can see, uh, you can see which 
ancestors, authors and like there is a lot I am running out of time. Similarly, there is file sets. You can see which files are modified on a certain change and uh, like if you want, if you have a diff and you have a large diff, you want to only see like uh, modified files, you can use the file set and it will uh, re return the files which were only modified, not added, not deleted and it will like pass on to like, so these ref sets and file sets are like uh, query type uh, things and they query the uh, repository and returns you things and you can pass them on to the other commands like log, export and everything. So this was about rev sets. So questions, there are more things in the slide so but I'm running out of time. Questions, any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Like how to move your current project from uh, Git to Mercurial? or anything any, like how, where I can host a mercurial repository. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. So if, you have, if all your reference, all your references, all your common references are integers and numbers and you have others who are working on the same mercurial yeah. project, how, how, do you, how do you merge those changes? Okay. So his question is like uh, revision numbers are there in mercurial, so how like uh, people work, uh, someone who is working there have some revision number, I also have revision number. So the revision number concept is a local thing like uh, I have revision numbers over here, when I push them the hash goes, ha the chain, the things works similar to get the hash is there, it, it get pushed there. So revision numbers are numbered locally like I might be having like when I absorbed or used evolved the revision numbers grew up like they the numbers were not just still 0 1 2 3 they were 4 5 6 so when you will pull those change it might be like there are already 10 revisions in his working directory and they will be like 11 12 13 so revision numbers are not constant they are not connected to a certain chain set like just like hash there is a hash of a chain set but there is not a revision number of a chain set it depends on the uh, uh, the repository where you are working and how how many of other how other how many other chain sets are there so it's not connected to a revision it's used it's very useful when you are working on a, the local direct local copy copy and you need to pass uh, numbers instead of hashes so it's useful in that case yeah okay. um, I think if there's anything else we can we can okay. take it outside of the session so um, okay so slide thank you yeah, yeah thank, thank you very much for giving your presentation thank you